Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. Yesterday, I showed you how to scan barcode labels. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to print your own barcode labels in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from Sierra from Fort Wayne, Indiana, one of my gold members. Sierra says, I watched your video yesterday on scanning barcodes. It was excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. How do I go about printing my own barcode labels? I sell products that we make in-house and we don't have UPC codes for them. So I just need a simple barcode I can scan things in and out of inventory with. Well, Sierra, I've got you covered. I did something very similar. Back in the 90s, in fact, I used to have my own PC hardware business. And we would buy computer components from various manufacturers, motherboards, hard drives, keyboards, and so on. And they would all have their own unique UPC codes, of course, for each product. But we'd build the computer, and then that computer, we'd want to put our own sticker on it with a barcode. So let me show you how you can print your own barcode labels using Microsoft Access. First thing I want you to do is go watch the barcode scanning video if you haven't for everyone else. I know Sierra's watched it already. If you haven't watched the one on scanning barcodes, go watch that first. Then come back to this one where I show you how to print barcodes. Go look down below the video in the links section. You'll find links to my other videos related to barcodes, the barcode font download, which we'll talk about in just a second, and some other goodies. Okay, now in the last video, I talked about the difference between the two types of barcodes. The 1D barcodes, which is your typical looking barcode that we've had for years, and the newer 2D barcodes like the QR codes. If you're just printing barcodes for your in-house inventory purposes, then 1D barcodes are just fine. I used them for years in my business, and we had a pretty good amount of inventory go through. 2D barcodes are cool. They can encode a lot more information. I will be making a video on 2D barcodes later, but for today, we're going to focus on the simpler 1D barcodes. Now, of the 1D barcodes, there's lots of different symbologies, all right? UPC, EAN, all kinds of different stuff. We are going to focus on the Code 39 barcode today. It's the easiest one to implement. Now, Code 39 has a bunch of different names. It's been around for years, right? Code 3 of 9 sounds like a Borg designation right? But that's all the same code, all right? It's all the same barcode. Code 39 was named that because it originally had 39 characters. Then they expanded it to 43. In fact, you might sometimes see it referred to as Code 39 Mod 43. There's a, there's a bunch of different names for it. But there are the characters you can use. Uppercase letters, numbers, and some punctuation, including the space, dollar sign, percent sign, period, and so on. We're only going to focus on using letters and numbers. Again, we're making the database. We create the rules. Now, code 39 is what's called self-checking. In other words, unless the barcode is severely damaged, it's almost impossible for a scan to give you a wrong character, okay? Because the, the bars themselves check the number. On the downside, it is low density, which means it's going to be a bigger label than something else like code 128. But generally, for your in-house purposes, you only need six, seven, maybe eight characters. And that's not going to be too big of a label. Now, the major benefit is you don't need to program a checksum digit. With some other codes like 128 and UPC, you have to program a check digit on the end, which involves a little math. It's not super hard, but it's just an extra step that you don't have to bother with with code 39. All you have to do is enclose whatever your code has to be inside of asterisks like that. And that's it. That's how the, the barcode scanner knows where to begin and end the barcode. All right, something else like code 128. Yeah, it's higher density, which means it can make a smaller barcode. It's got more information packed into a smaller space. And it does add more characters. You can use lowercase letters if that's important to you. It's not to me. It never has been. It does require a check digit on the end, which means you have to do some math. But honestly, I've used code 39 for years at least five years in my computer hardware business, never had a problem with the barcode. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. First thing is you're going to download a free barcode font from this website. I'll put a link down below in the links section. There, if you feel like typing it in, if you don't want to click on the link, I put it in my URL shortener for you. This is a barcode that's been around since at least 1997. I was using it in my business in the late 90s. It's solid, it works. 
It's been working since Windows XP and it works in Windows 10. Okay. So click here to download the file that will save it to your downloads folder. Now you can't just click here to open the file. All right. That will open up the zip file and you can see what's inside it, but you can't install the font this way. All right. Here are the fonts. Here are the fonts, they're TTF files, that stands for true type font file, but we're inside a zip file, so you can't install them this way. So go up to the downloads folder, click right here, go up to the downloads folder, okay? There's the zip file, right click on it, and go to extract all, all right? And it's gonna extract it into a folder in the downloads folder, hit extract, okay? Now, here's a folder, inside your downloads folder that has the files in it. Now we can actually install this guy. Now there's two different font files in here. There's free three of nine, that's the one we want. And there's another one that's free three of nine extended. Don't worry about that one. Use this one, free three of nine, okay? Right click and then go to install. Now it's gonna install it just for you. If you wanna install it for all users on the computer, you have to be logged on as an administrator. I'm just gonna click on install. Okay, the installing window flashes and goes away almost immediately. If you want to make sure that it's installed, let's close this stuff. Close this, close this. You can close your browser now. Go down here to your search bar and type in fonts. Whoops, I can't type today. Fonts. Okay, here's your font settings. It's a folder inside of your system settings. Okay, here's all your fonts down here. You can scroll down and see all the fonts that are installed on your system. You're looking for free three of nine. Should be down here somewhere. Let's see. Come here. Where are you? And there it is. Free three of nine. Okay. Click on it. And you should see... Well, well, that's pretty much all you're going to see. Uh, if you want to preview it, type in, uh, you know, 599CD. Uh, and there it is. All right. There's your preview. Okay. And this is Windows 10. All right. Windows 8, which is my other system. A lot of you are probably still using Windows 8. It looks like that. There's your fonts folder. Okay. And if you open up the font in Windows 8, you'll see that. Now notice, you can't use lowercase letters. So those don't show up in the font of the barcode. They just show up there normal in Arial or whatever that is. Okay, so we can only use capitals and numbers. Okay, so now the font is installed on your system. Now we can use it just like any other font in our database to make reports or mailing labels or whatever. Okay, so you should be good to go at this point. Next thing you're going to do is send Matthew a thank you. If you're going to use his font for free, which he put a lot of work into making, send him a thank you. There's his email address. I'll put a copy of it down below. You can click on it. He says you can use him for personal or commercial projects. He asks no money. He just would love to hear from you. Okay, so drop him an email and say, hey, I saw your font featured in one of Richard Ross's videos. Tell him I sent you. Okay. He's not charging for the font, and I'm not charging for the video. So you're welcome. Now, he says you're under no obligation to do this, but I, your teacher says send him a thank you note. You know, when you're in school and the teacher says we're doing thank you notes for your parents or whatever? Well, send him a thank you note right now. Do it. Or you can't watch the rest of the video. <laughs> okay, so now that we have the font installed, let's see how we can use it in Access. Okay, so here we are back in the Tech Help free template. This is a free download from my website. However, we made some modifications to it in the last video where we learned how to do product lookups with the scanning. So this database has those changes in it. So again, go watch that video if you need to know how to make these changes. We added a product table with a product code. That's the UPC code. Now, for the purposes of this class, we're going to assume that these are products that I make in-house. So I'm just going to put smaller codes in here. All right, one, two, three, four, five, and then maybe uh, something like that, okay? Two different product codes, two different products. You can add as many as you want, okay? You can put letters in here if you really want to. Make sure they're capitals, though. I mean, we can convert them later, but it's better if you just put capitals in here. Now, a lot of people ask me at this point, hey, Rick, is it possible to start my product code at one or a thousand or whatever number and have the next product get assigned the next code? Yeah, certainly possible. I've got a video for it, custom sequential number. I do it with order IDs, but you can use it with product IDs, customer IDs, whatever. Go watch that video if you want to learn how to take your product code, start it at a thousand, and then have the next one be a thousand one. 2002. I mean, they're your products. You can assign whatever number you want to them, right? I'll put a link to this video down below in the link section. But for now, we're just going to type our own codes in because it really doesn't matter for the purposes of class. All right, something. And it costs $13. Okay? All right. Okay, so now I got my product 
table. I got my product codes. I want to print some barcode labels based on these numbers here. All right, how do we do that? Well, click on the product T, go to create, go to labels. All right, mailing label wizard appears. Pick a label that fits the size of the label that you want. Now, if you have a Dymo label printer where you can print them one at a time, great. I've got a video on how to do that with Access. All right, you can use a Dymo label writer, which I strongly recommend. I think they cost around $60 or $70. They're not expensive. If you're going to be doing a lot of one-up labels, watch this video. Get the label printer. Use this guy. All right, it works fantastic. And you can use the same techniques that I cover in this video to print your barcode labels. Because remember, as I'm going to show you in a second, the barcode label is going to be just like a regular mailing label, except you use the barcode font. That's it. Now, if you don't have a label printer, just find a label in here that looks like what you want to print it on. I usually like the Avery 5160s. It's the one where you get 30 on a page, right? There's three columns, 10 rows. All right, that's my favorite mailing label to use. Next, I cover how to use this guy in my Access Beginner 1 class. So if you don't know how to use the label wizard, go watch that class. Again, that's free. So we're just going to set it up with the wizard, and then we're going to change stuff around. Okay, so just use the defaults. That's fine. All right, what do we want to see in the label? Now, you could put the product name in there if you want to and the product code. If you want to see that product name on it, that's, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Let's go right there and put enter. Oh, let's see here. Sometimes that happens. Backspace, enter. Yeah. Sometimes if you put two things next to each other, it, it messes up. You got to put the product name in there, hit enter, and then put the product code in there. A little bug. All right, next. Uh, what do you want to sort by? doesn't really matter. Let's sort by product name. That's fine. Next. Let's give it a good name. I'm going to call this product label R. And, okay, some data may not be displayed. You get this a lot. This just means that the there's not enough horizontal space. I talk about this in beginner one. All right. For some reason, the wizard always makes the labels too wide. We just got to shrink them down a little bit. All right. Get on, get on that one, access team. Okay. So here we go. There's our labels. Let's go into design view. Okay. First things first, let's make this a little bit narrower like that. That's usually all you have to do. Just shrink it down just a little tiny bit. All right. Save it. Close it. Let's do a print preview here. Print preview. Did I get it? Yeah, I got it. See, and it's almost not noticeable when you go to print it. Okay. Now, I don't want to see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 there. I want to see the barcode. So go to design view. Let's make this guy a little bit bigger because the barcode's going to come in larger. Okay. Maybe slide that up there. Okay, let's change the font of this guy. All right, right up here. Format, font, to the free three of nine. And there it is, free three of nine. Okay. All right, let's save it. Actually, let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's make the font larger. A little bit bigger. That's why you don't want to use too many digits. Maybe center it. Okay, save it, close it, and print preview. And there it is. Now, it looks good, but if you try to scan this with a barcode scanner, it's not going to work. Why? Because we don't have the little asterisks before and after it. That's necessary for the code to work, okay? Okay, I just verified that. I printed that out, and I tried scanning it with my scanner. No bueno. It would not read. Now, let's add the asterisks on it and try it again. So go back to design view. All right, how do you do that? We're going to come in here, go to all. All right, I don't like leaving things named text three. So this can be product code. And let's call this product code TXT like that. We're going to make the control source equals an asterisk and product code and another asterisk. That is called string concatenation. And if you don't know what that is, Go watch my concatenation video. I'll put a link down below. That's free as well. There, in case you can't see what I typed in there. I know it's kind of hard to see on the full screen, right? It's equals and then an asterisk inside of quotes, double quotes, ampersand, product code, that's the field, ampersand, another asterisk inside of double quotes. Basic string concatenation. All right, so we can close that. And I'm actually going to make this font a little bit larger. I printed it out and it's still kind of small. Let's go 36 point. That should be better. And maybe maybe 48. Let's do 48 point. Now, you don't change the label size because the label vertical height and stuff like that has to be set. But that should be more than enough space. I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, yeah, that should fit just fine. Save that. 
All right, close it. Preview it again. Okay, it looks a lot better. All right, let me print this out. Right-click print. Okay, here I am with the handy-dandy scanner again. Now, first, I've got the barcodes that we did first. Now, I made them a little larger because they were kind of small. But let's try to scan these. All right, nothing. They're not scanning at all. Okay. Now I've got the second batch that we made with the asterisks in them. Let's try to scan these. Look at that. They scanned right in. Got it. Got it. And they go right into my notepad, just like we did in the last class. Perfect. So there you go. That's how you print out barcodes for your products. And once again, if you're going to print out a lot of single barcode labels, go get yourself a Dymo printer. They're not expensive. They work great. Now, if you want to print out a lot of the same label, like let's say 15 copies of this barcode, then I will show you how to do that in the extended cut. That involves a little more finesse and some little tiny bit of coding. Want to learn more? In the extended cut, I show you how to print multiple barcodes for the same product, if you want to print 10 of a particular label, for example, we'll add a button on the product form. We create a product form in the extended cut for the last video for the scanning barcodes. Okay, we'll add an add label button there. You click it four times if you want four labels. It adds it to a label table. And then we use that to generate the barcode labels. So you can print out as many as you want. Then on the main menu, we'll make a button to print the labels and when you're done printing, a button to delete the labels out of the table. And so it's clear and ready for the next time you want to print labels. All of that is covered in the extended cut for members. How do you become a member? Click the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my Tech Help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full length courses found on my website and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like level one, level two is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free access beginner level one course, more of my tech help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from accesslearningzone.com.